Welcome back. We're getting some breaking news from the Trump campaign. They're reportedly planning to make a, quote, major announcement in Las Vegas this morning at about 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. We'll bring you that announcement live when it happens. Meantime, let's talk about the Latino vote. Former Vice President Joe Biden failed to connect with Latino voters in the state of Florida. It was not the blue wave. The Biden campaign anticipated while Trump, meanwhile, made major inroads with the Latino community in not only Florida, but other key states as well. Joining us to discuss is Florida State Representative Daniel Perez. Daniel, it's great to see you. We've spoken before about the president's growing support among those Latino voters in the state of Florida. Tell me your thoughts uh, as we know that Florida did, in fact, go red for the president. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see you again, but I think we can officially... A state with complete confidence that Florida is no longer a purple state. Uh, Florida is a red state. And I think you bring up a great point. The reason that Florida is a, a great state amongst many reasons is the Latino voter. The Cuban American voter has historically been a conservative voter. But the turnout that we have had as of late, especially in Miami Dade County, when we're talking about not just Cuban Americans, but Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, People have understood that the Republican Party is the, Rep the party of opportunity. And I think that they show that in the ballot box. Yeah, absolutely. And we had heard so much from the Trump campaign about specifically their ground game in the state of Florida. They were getting out there. They were connecting with voters. They were listening to voters. Tell me about why you didn't see that from the Biden campaign. Was that a missed opportunity? Would that have made the difference? I'm not sure that it would have made the difference, but I can tell you it was a missed opportunity. I mean, I could see that on a daily basis when I was walking my own district. I would see Trump walkers regularly. Some of them were paid and some of them were volunteers. On election day, I always stand at the same precinct in the middle of my district. And I was the only uh, Republican at that precinct, along with two Trump supporters that were there in order to gain support at that specific precinct. There was no one from the Democratic Party. The ground game of the Democratic Party in the state of Florida was non-existent. It was absolutely zero. And I think it hurt him. Let's talk about another state, the state of Arizona. We here, we're still waiting to call that state officially, but clearly some other mainstream networks have decided to call it in favor of Joe Biden. What are your thoughts on Arizona? Of course, as we still wait for the votes to come in, what's been the Latino vote effort in Arizona? The Latino vote effort in Arizona hasn't been as popular as, as I expected, to be quite honest. I think when we're talking about Latinos and demographics of Latinos, there are different um, parts of the world that make up the, the, the Latin community. And I think in Arizona, it's a different um, group than what we have here in Miami-Dade County. Here we're a majority Cuban-American. In Arizona, that is not the case. I don't think the Latino voters are carrying Trump in Arizona the same way that they did in Florida. But I will tell you this, even though it hasn't been called for Arizona by some networks, um, I, I think this election comes down to, to 12 p.m. Eastern time when we find out if Nevada will get called or not. I think if Nevada get, gets called in favor of the president, the, tre the, the president's in the game. I, I, I think we're, we're back to, to, fair, to fair game. And if he doesn't um, and he loses Nevada, I, I think the president is going to be in a tough scenario to be able to, to claim victory. Yeah, and again, the Trump campaign reportedly hosting some sort of press briefing at about 1130 in that state. We're going to be watching that as well. Um, but, Daniel, you know, I'm sure you've been watching as we had this whole time. The polls, let's just be honest, they had it completely wrong. And we were having these authentic conversations before. We had an idea that the president would, in fact, take Florida because we're speaking to people who are living there and they're very aware of the ground game as well. But, again, if you just looked at the polls, you wouldn't have had that idea. And they got it wrong again. Uh, how does this impact people's trust in these national polls? I don't think that trust exists anymore. I think you can get the polls and throw them out the front door window of your car when you drive home today, Emma. It's just not going to happen. Those polls just aren't real. They are not polling the average American. Florida is a great example. We have about 1,000 people moving into Florida a day. And those are people that are leaving the states of high taxes and less free government. And they're coming to Florida for a reason. Are they, are they polling those people are they polling the, the new Floridians, the people that are leaving those left-leaning governments in order to be able to have actual freedom, religious freedom, individual liberties? That's what Florida stands for. Are those people getting polled? Because if they're not, those polls don't, they just shouldn't exist. Right. Absolutely. I think it's going to change a lot 
of, of how people view these polls, view these national media reports as well after we've seen uh, the results continue to come in for this 2020 election. Daniel Perez joining us live from the great state of Florida. Daniel, thanks so much. Thanks, thanks a lot.